All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, coming back with a actually returning guest. Uh, this is someone that we had on actually just a few short weeks ago. Uh, as of this recording, actually, the, the first episode will go live sometime in September. About middle September is what we're, we're thinking as far as the coordination. And this episode that we're recording today is going to correlate with the new book that he has coming out. We're talking to Daryl Dittmer today, and he's coming to us from still from North Georgia, I believe, up there in the mountains, which yes, is always sir. super. Yeah, which is super cool. We're going to be talking about his books today. Uh, when we finished the first episode, uh, the conversation, I just I felt it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of connection. Uh, there was just so much, so many other things that I wanted to, to pick his brain on, right? The wisdom, the stories that he's been through, everything that he was sharing with us in that first episode. And if you're looking or would like to check out that first episode, I'll leave the link to that in the show notes below. But obviously, you can go back just a few episodes and you'll find that original episode. But anyways, I just wanted to bring him back on and go a little bit deeper into his books. We talked about him briefly. Uh, the first one is When I Stopped Fighting. And then his new book that's going to be coming out here in the middle of October, October 15th, I believe is the launch date as of today. And that's going to be called When You Stop Fighting. And I just, when you think about that, we talk about on the Rich Mind podcast, that winning within, that that battle that we have within ourselves, the thoughts, the feelings, all of the stuff that's going on in our internal world and how that affects our exterior world. I just think that this conversation today again with Daryl is going to be a lot of fun. So Daryl, I'm not going to go through a lot of the bio stuff that people can check you, check you out on the previous episode to get a little bit more about your story and that type of thing. But yeah, just welcome back to the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Randy. I really appreciate you having me back and, and having me back so soon. I, I appreciate it very, very much. Yeah. Well, I told, I just said, I've seen here at the beginning that, you know, this that conversation we had at the beginning or the first time around was just a lot of fun. I can tell you've got a lot of stories to share. You're trying to impact a lot of people with the different things you have going on. Uh, so yeah, I just thought it was going to be a great thing to help try to promote the new book that's coming out, uh, when you stop fighting and I just thought we could have a, a super fun conversation before we dive into that. I just want to, uh, so we talked about the first book when I stopped fighting, there was a, uh, on, on Daryl's, uh, Amazon page to go purchase the book and we'll have a link to the books in the show notes as well. But just this one little couple little paragraphs actually, that I think will give you a feel for the uh, dialogue that we're about to have today. It talks about when I stop fighting illustrates how every single one of us can stop for a few moments, take a pause, evaluate ourselves and determine what we want to get out of our time here. A move toward a fulfilling, gratifying and rewarding place is available for all of us, no matter where we start. This is a must read for you or someone, you know, is struggling, stuck, scared, unsure, or in need of a brand new way of perceiving themselves, their world and this journey we call life. So yeah, I, I resonate with all of that just because as I mentioned, or we talked about in that first episode, for sure, right? We're all just trying to navigate this thing we call life. We all have different stories and I think they can resonate with different people in different ways. But we talk about when I stop fighting and uh, so let's dive into that a little bit, Daryl, and, and maybe unpack a little bit more about what that has meant for you. Uh, and then uh, maybe try to help some of the folks that are listening to us today. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate it, Randy. Thank you. I, you know, when you're reading that that those couple of little uh, lines there, um, you know, from from the Amazon page, it's amazing how, you know, I I was stuck and I was scared and I was you know petrified and I and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to move and I didn't know how to change my life and I didn't know how to go in a different direction and. And these were all the things that I needed to learn. And, and, you know, and, and it's, it's over time, I think, you know, the whole, when I stop fighting thing, I know we talked a little bit about that when, when, um, uh, you know, we talked the first time, but, but really it was, a, it was a mentor of mine who, who basically said to me, you know, as I was, and just a little bit of background for those who maybe didn't see, you know, the first episode, um, I grew up in the Midwest as, you know, you and I connected on that for sure. And, uh, you know, the Midwestern sort of Protestant work ethic, be tough, be a hard worker. My dad was a mechanic. He was a Navy veteran. He was a pretty tough dude. Um, you know, and those are the things that I grew up with. It was, you know, if you're not, uh, if there's not a bone sticking out, you might not be hurt, you know? So, so those kinds of things were, were how I grew up. And, 
and it was a it, you know the, my upbringing was fine i have no qualms it was it was completely fine um you know in terms of of looking back at my life now but but you know it was about fighting it was about wrestling it was about you know doing everything i could to try to you know if you're struggling swing harder if you you know if it's not fit and get a bigger hammer you know all those kinds of things and and those were real you know and and i don't know if that's necessarily the mindset these days but i think in a lot of ways it can be we can we think that you know no pain no gain and work through the pain and all those kinds of things and and you know i still have to catch myself now you know where i'm where i'm i'm diving into uh deep waters and i don't mind diving into deep waters that's just become a way of life but but i do need to rest i do need to do things like allowing life to happen as opposed to forcing life to happen all the time and you know those are the things that have to do with the fight those are things that have to do with with me wrestling you know trying to wrestle life and and pin it and you know you can't you can't pin life life pins us right i mean that's how it goes and and the harder i try to jam things things through the more life can pin me um and so there's there's a balance that has to be achieved and and this book i don't know if if folks have seen it but this book which is my first book when i stop fighting the unexpected joy of getting my head out of my ass is um my i i learned a lot over the last 40 or so years of putting work into myself and putting work into my life and and failing and messing up and sometimes succeeding and you know all those things over that that course of time and and this book the first book was my way of saying okay here's my story you know here's here's where i come from here's you know some of the things that i did and and some of the ways that i think i can help um I, i've been very fortunate over that time to you know have had some success in in many areas of life and so this isn't something i'm doing for the money believe me i've put a lot more money into this than than i may ever get out of it i don't know but it, you know i want to get it into people's hands um i really do want to get it into people's hands i know we're going to talk about a, a giveaway at the end but um you know because i do want to get it into people's hands and and uh so so the fight is and getting back to Bud a little bit, Bud said to me, and these were the words that he said, he said, Daryl, when you stop fighting, the fighting stops. So my first book, When I Stop Fighting, is, is the takeoff point for those words that completely changed my life. And, and, and one more thing, I, you know, I didn't, it didn't change my life right away. It's been, and, and everything that, you know, I talk about in my books and, and on podcasts and whatever is, it's all work in progress. You know, Daryl Dittmer is a work in progress. Um, it's not going to end until they check me out of this meat suit and, you know, I go on to whatever I go on to next, right? I mean, it's just, I'm I'm doing my thing here, but I'm learning like everybody else and I'm growing, you know, and doing my best to grow like everybody else. And, and that's what I want from my life. And, and I have learned the more that I stop fighting me, that's where the fight is. The more I stop fighting me, um, the better my life becomes automatically. And so that fight, and we talk about that, or we did talk about that uh, in the previous episode, as far as the internal fight, when you're having that fight for, from within yourself, it sounds like you've evolved over the last 40 years, 50 plus years, whatever, how long, you know what I mean? Whenever that fight began, how have you been able to navigate that? Because I believe that if people could catch that pass, really, you know what I mean? Really internalize it's It's an internal process of understanding that when you become better from within, right? Inside with your thoughts, with your emotional intelligence, right? Being able to control your emotions, how that can be the springboard and the launch pad, you mentioned a launch pad to the, this dream life or this destination that we're looking for in the future. You talked about it being an evolution from when you heard that from Bud 40 years ago 
when did that really start kicking in or when did you really start seeing some of the fruits of that labor as far as that work from the work from within to be able to see some of the results from your extra, uh, your 3d world? Yeah, I love that. I love that question, Randy, because because, you know, one of the most important things I wish I could pull up the page in in book number two that talks about, you know, some of the things that aren't going to be happening right away. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be levitating. I'm not going to be you know, I'm not going to be doing things uh, always the way I want to do them. I'm, I'm going to have emotional challenges. I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get upset. You know, all those things are still going to happen. I think that's I think that's where people kind of get hung up and where I got hung up. Um, I look at my life as a very, uh, you know, a, a progression over time where initially my first intention was to just be able to put a smile on my face, just want, just be able to look people in the eye, just be able to have a conversation, just be able to have confidence, all those things. So it, it goes back to that paragraph you were reading earlier you know, stuck, scared, unsure, all of those things is what I was. So that was number one. I just, I wanted to get out of the quagmire of, of being miserable. Um, and, you know, my life included addictions and that sort of thing that I had to jettison. So that was another thing that I was, that was the first thing that I was fighting that needed to get jettisoned. And then, then I started to have to work on, like you said, my internals, you know, all the stuff that's going on in here, in here. Um, and I look at life and I talk about it actually in both books, it goes into a lot more detail in the second book that's coming out on October 15th. But, um, the, you know, the body, mind, heart, and soul, it's an ecosystem. It's, it's something where if I'm not treating one of those correctly, um, it's going to throw all the others off. And, and there's some very simple ways that I've learned over the course of time, um, you know, that that can help with each of those uh, with my body. I, I need to eat the right things. I need to exercise. I need to get enough sleep. You know, it's it's simple stuff. But in in a world where we're surrounded by just make it taste good, just make it feel good when you eat it, you know, like that kind of thing, we're surrounded by that. And, and we, nobody wants to have pain. Nobody wants to have anything that doesn't taste good. You know, do you want to eat broccoli or do you want to eat Skittles? Right. So, <laughs> but, 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 you know, broccoli might be the way to go most of the time. And then the occasional, you know, Skittles is fine. But so, you know, with my mind, I, 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 my mind is, um, is an important tool and, and, and I can toughen my mind, you know, and, and I had to learn how to do that over time. I had to learn how to get rid of people who were toxic in my life. I had to learn how to to not accept being, you know, somebody um, disrespecting, you know, me or somebody I know. Just, hey, here's here's where it cuts off. You know, here's what you're not allowed to do with me. And And there's an old saying, we teach people how to treat us. And I believe that's 100 percent true. And you know, we don't have to do it from a threatening perspective, just from a, Hey, this is, this is where I draw the line. And, and those things are for me. It's not, it's not for the other person to behave. If I need to get somebody to behave in my life, maybe I have to question whether or not they should be in my life, you know? So, so, and you know, the heart part is, as far as body, mind, heart, and soul, the heart part is, you know, I, I, we all, we all sort of, uh, meet on the playing field of emotion and how we feel about things. And, you know, I may not have the same stories as you, Randy, although I think some are probably pretty similar. But I also would say that, you know, your stories are very different, but all the emotions you've gone through, I'm sure I've gone through. And all the emotions I've gone through, you've gone through. And that's, you know, is it anger? Is it fear? Is it jealousy? Is it, you know, is it love? Is it joy? Is it, you know, all of those things, um, you know, all of those things we can relate to with each other. And, and we need to understand that it's okay. And what I had to understand was it's okay to feel, it's okay to feel even the bad stuff, even the difficult stuff, even the things I don't want to feel what, where the, the trick is with this stuff is, you know, I, I don't need to allow it, those feelings to 
you know, give me permission to do something that I don't want to do or that I regret or that I, you know, won't feel good about afterward. That's, that's the part where I need to sort of uh, lasso myself in and just understand that feelings are feelings. You know, they're probably not going to, they're not going to make my life and they're not going to break my life. I need to allow them to happen um, in the midst of, you know, trying in all the other realms. And then the soul part is, and, and this kind of, you know, there's, uh, it goes into a lot deeper detail in these books, but, but the soul part is I need to understand that, you know, quiet and silence and gratitude and appreciation and all of these things are things that nourish me, you know, they, they nourish me internally. And, and, you know, I do practices that, that help me do those things. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's an ecosystem. It's important to pay attention to all of them. And, and that's what I've been doing for, you know, a few decades now. And, and it's, it's reaped benefits. You know, it comes out, it resonates and, and ripples through life, you know, and, and, and you can see, you can see, or I can see how, you know, how things have manifested in my life based on working on all of those things inside of myself. So, so I know it's a, a little bit of a roundabout way to get there, but I think that's, you know, that's been the work over the course of the last few decades for me. And that's what I try to let people know in my, in my books. Love it. So experiencing, going through different experiences, learning, applying, not being afraid to fail. You mentioned that uh, earlier, and I know you, we talked about that in the first episode as well. A lot of times people will look at failure as, as like a final event versus it's just an experience. You said it for yourself that you know you look at it as an experience to, to learn from, to, to then reapply, to keep moving forward. So for myself, with the experiences trying to learn how to do, like you're talking about, I like how you called it an ecosystem. Try to get better in all areas though of that part of your life, right? I'm not perfect in any of those every day. I try to be. I try to do the best I possibly can, right? Trying to keep the, uh, the processes moving forward, right? Moving forward, not being afraid to fail. But then continue to learn, to really continue to realize that people like you, people uh, a little bit further on in the journey, have stories to share, have different experiences that you might be able to relate with to add to the, add to the ecosystem, right? A different way of looking at life, a different way of thinking, a different way of being. So my question is, I'm curious, do you have any of those specifics? You talked about broccoli versus Skittles, which obviously I think everybody listening can, can relate to that one, right? Is there any of the other things that you've discovered for yourself that people can take away from this discussion today that they could begin relatively simply start implementing into their life? You talked about meditation there a little bit also. Anything uh, that folks can take away today that you either talk in your books or even just in this discussion today that, that people can start implementing this this ecosystem and get start bringing into uh, equilibrium, I guess, maybe with uh, to create this better life on the outside. Yeah, there are. And I, I think, you know, something I talk about in book one, which is called uh, the ass kicking machine. Um, you know, we have to keep the ass kicking machine at bay. We have to stop you know, judging ourselves so harshly, if we're doing the best we can, um, you know, stop trying to, to beat ourselves up for w where we make mistakes or where we, you know, go off the track or where we do things, maybe, you know, not to our satisfaction, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, one of the things that I think is really important is to understand when that ass kicking machine is turned on. Um, mm -hmm. I hope it's all right to say that because I, I know I, it's in the book. I already said it once, but anyway. Keep saying it, man. It's all good. Bring it. I love it. Um, you know, that ass kicking machine is easy to flip on and it's easy to keep on. You know, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, what's wrong with me? Oh, I'm not achieving. I'm not doing everything I want to do. So so one of the things is to understand is that that there we, we all have, uh, you know, installed in us um, normally I think, you know, and, and I had it installed in me because I was expected to do things correctly. I was handed this box of stuff, you know, believe this, do this, don't do this. And when I went off the track on all of those things, I could, you know, I, the, the ass kicking machine would flip on and it might flip on with my parents and, you know, I get my, my butt whipped and, uh, you know, that kind <laughs> of thing happens. So, 
So, but I have to turn it off for myself and I have to allow myself some grace and I have to understand that, you know, that thing can go on and that I have the power to turn it off. Um, and one of the great things that I've found is that, you know, I can get in my head about stuff, but there's a great way to get out of your head about stuff. That's go help somebody else, go help somebody else with a problem, call a friend, call a mentor you know, see if you can help someone with something that they need help with, whatever it is, get out of here, get out of that, you know, that, that sort of that mental real estate that can get eaten up by us just kicking around boxes up there, right in that attic. And, uh, and, and that's not a good place to be sometimes, you know, and that affects how we feel about things. And so, so, get the ass kicking machine, you know, understand that it exists and, and, you know, understand that you can turn it off or you can slow it down. Um, and, and if you're struggling, you can, you can feel free to go help someone else. I think that's a really important thing. And I think that's something that, you know, that I've tried to do over the years and many times that works. Um, and I think another part, you know, there's so many things that, that we can do, but, but a, another really important thing to understand is, and I'm guilty of it because I am a type A nut job. I can go crazy on things. And so I have to understand that that I have that capacity. So so I need to take baby steps. I need to not try to eat the whole Big Mac in one bite, you know, and, and I haven't even had a Big Mac in 35 years, but but I <laughs> don't don't eat a Big Mac all in one bite, you know, take little bites and and do some little things and, and change little things and allow yourself some grace. And as long as, and this is, this is huge for me because, because, you know, people talk about success and failure and I've done a lot more failing than I have succeeding quite honestly. And, and that's just part of the game, but it's important to understand and, and maybe even reframe success versus failure. I like to reframe it and, and help, teach people that that success could be um, doing the best I can. I am doing the best I can. And I can say, you know what, that is success. If I'm doing the best I can, because I'm not in charge of the results. You know, if there's a, a deal that I'm trying to get closed or something that I'm trying to work with and change, you know, an elephant might run across it and smash everything. I have no idea. I'm not in charge of all that stuff that happens. I'm in charge of my effort and my attitude. And those are the only things that I'm in charge of. So, you know, there's, there's really simple things and in, in taking those little bites instead of big bites. And, and, you know, as long as I'm trying, as long as I'm doing the best that I can and, and, we know that in here, you know, we know whether or not we're doing the best we can. And that, that takes honesty with ourselves. And maybe sometimes, you know, as another uh, potential tip, maybe, you know, we, we change that little, that, that discussion we have with ourselves and say, you know what, I did screw that up. Or, you know what, I could do that better. Or, or, you know what? I was wrong. Let me just admit it. You know, all those little things matter and all those things go into our trajectory of improvement. Um, so, so those are the few things that came to mind as, you know, with your question, Randy, I, I, I hope that helps some in terms of, you know, making some of this stuff make a little more sense. I'm sure it will. That was a fantastic explanation. And I know you've got sons. How old are your boys at this point? 27 and 30. Okay. My son is about to turn 27. He's my oldest. Uh, and then I have two daughters. So a big passion of mine is that and I'm trying to help that generation. I love trying to, whether it's coming wisdom from me or else I try to express wisdom from others, right? I'm trying to share with them as much as I possibly can uh, to try to help them navigate life, right? Everything's changing so fast, so rapidly. We were talking about AI before we hopped on record here today, just how much that's even changing. Uh, you and I could both remember back before there was even an internet. Uh, yeah, imagine that. Imagine living life without even an internet. Is that even possible? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because we <laughs> uh, jokingly around our house, we talk about it all the time. Uh, my wife and I talk about you know living in the analog age of maps, Payphones. having a map. 
have it a map phone. and have it yeah. you know, a pay phone. My daughter had to drive around town the other day and she was using Google Maps and, and wasn't enjoying it. I'm like, imagine trying to do it with just a map or not even have any idea where you're going. Back in the day, all the stories we could share. So the question I or the the, the question I was going to lead with that though is is trying to dig out of you maybe some of the wisdom that you're sharing with your kids in that 20 to early 30 stage based on your experiences, based on the failures and all the experiences that you've uh, got gathered up to this point. Is there anything going on, um, a topic, a subject, anything you're working on with them with that is uh, specific to that age group as far as trying to navigate all the distractions, um, just all the stuff that's going seems to be going on in our world today. I was just curious if there's anything you're sharing with them specifically that once again, the listeners today could be, uh, take away from and try to apply in their own life. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's, there's ongoing things that we talk about as, as we just talk, right. And, and as life happens and as, you know, I don't spend much time on politics or news or things like that. I, I spend time on on working in here, but it's easy for a younger person because everybody's got all that, you know, they got the phone in front of them constantly. So you're seeing all this stuff and, you know, they're seeing all this stuff. And, and you know, one of the things that I try to impart, which I think is important is, you know, the world is, your world is what is going on in here and what's going on with the people that you can touch and the people that you can relate to and the people that you're working with. And, you know, that's your world. It's the, you know, there's a lot of stuff that they'll say is going on in the world, which may or may not be going on in the world. I don't know. I'm not there. They're not my friends. You know, they're not, I, I don't know anything about that. And, and it's easy to get emotionally involved in things that we can have absolutely no impact on. But I do know what I can have impact on. I can have an impact on me and I can have an impact on how I treat all of the people in my life. Um, and so that's that's a big one, you know, that we that I try to touch on as often as I can. You know, I believe I'm heard. Um, I, I look at and, you know, I don't expect anything to be, oh, Daryl said it. So, you know, uh it, it, you know, I should change that right away or that's going to change. It's all seeds. It's all seeds that I'm planting. I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing seeds out there. I'm throwing things out there that can be, can be grabbed. And, you know, maybe, maybe they get a little buried under the dirt over some time and they start to germinate, you know, and if it's, if it's five years from now, if it's 10 years from now, if it's 20 years from now, my job is to plant the seeds. Um, and so that's what I'm, that's what I'm attempting to do. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with my book with a larger uh, audience or with both books. So, you know, one of the other things, though, I think is important and, and I've been, you know, working with and this is going to be an ongoing saga with my younger son, who's 27. Um, he is uh, just recently uh, had a baby. So my first grandchild, two months old, Congrats. sweetest little thing. We were, we yeah. were uh, visiting her this past weekend. And, and uh, but he's also embroiled in a very difficult sales job in a, in a difficult industry. And, and I've done that. I've been there. I have gotten my ass handed to me 10,000 times. Um, and and I can impart that all day long to him, but it doesn't matter until he gets his ass handed to him a few times, you know, but, but what I try to do is say, look, you know, these are the things that are going to happen. These are the things that are going to come up. You are going to, you know, there, and I said to him, the other day, I said, there's no problem in your life that wouldn't be changed. Cause this is what said to me, there's no problem in your life that wouldn't be changed by closing a couple of deals, you know, and mm -hmm. And I don't mean that literally. I just mean that from a sales perspective and from a from a business perspective. Um, you know, it's the the persistence that it takes, the determination that it takes, the discipline that it takes. You know, all of these things. The even the honesty that it takes. You know, to say, hey, you know, say to myself, maybe I'm not doing all the work that I should be doing. Maybe I need to look at a different way of of handling things or doing things or getting prospects or you know, or, or my, the sort of script that I use when I get on the phone, all of those kinds of things. And, and, but, but it always goes back to the principles. It always goes back to, 
you know, what am I lining up for myself in terms of what I expect from myself from a principled perspective? Um, you know, the consistency and, and all those things that, you know, that can be principle oriented. How am I doing those things? And, you know, the other thing I say to him, and I'm hoping this is relevant for, you know, a, a younger generation that we're, we're talking to is, if you want to be financially successful, and this is something that I work with, with both my sons on, um, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to do anything. You can, you can do whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't matter. What matters is, you know, how do you feel about yourself, your life, your occupation? Just understand that life requires some money to get through it. And, and it just does, you got to feed your family, you know, you got to have a place to live. You got to, you got to take care of those responsibilities, especially when you have a child. And, and so it's important to, um, understand that if you want to make a lot of money and they told me this before I was, you know, before I had gone through all the, the madness, they said, you're going to have a lot more headaches, you know, than if you don't you know, potentially you're, it's tough. It's difficult. You know, you have to really, you really have to sort of, you know, understand that you're going to withstand headwinds the further you want to go and the more you want to do, you know, from a business perspective. And that was my experience. So, so I think those things are important to understand and just kind of prepare for and, and uh, you know, the same, the same, discipline, consistency, persistence, uh, you know, determination, all of those things, honesty, faith, you know, all these things, um, humility, many times, it all applies across the board. It's not just in business. It's not, you know, it's life. It's all of life. And the more I align myself with those uh, principled ways of being, uh, the better I am in here. And then, you know, that manifests as the better I am out there. Love it. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. My son, uh, the 27 year old. So basically the same age. Uh, so my grandson is going to be turning uh, 11 months here in just a few days. Cool. Yeah. First one. So it sounds like yours as well. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. From new grandfather to new grandfather. It's, it's the best thing in the whole wide world. So congratulations. It's, it's Thank a lot you. of fun. Uh, he, he actually comes back tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing him again, little Rowan. Uh, but yeah, same thing with, with my son, he's actually in a, in a pretty high stressful sales position position as well. Ironically that you say that, uh, I've tried to express a few things that I think that will be coming his way based on, uh, my experience in sales and that type of thing. And it's, it's uh, it's interesting to kind of watch it happen in real time. Uh, it's almost like in slow motion because it's not it's not happening to me per se, but it has happened in the past, right? So it's like you just kind of give them some some red flags to kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, but it all comes back to what you just said: the simple basics. I uh, talked about Jim Rohn a lot on on my podcast before, and I express that to to my son all the time that you just need to get really good at the basics. Focus on the basics, and if you can be exceptional at that. And we're talking about basic stuff. I mean, looking the part, speaking well, like you're saying, honesty, all of those things, basic stuff. You'll be so far ahead of your peers uh, just because of that. That's been my experience. And that's what I try to share with him. And and hopefully he's doing that. I'm not with him, obviously, 24 hours a day. But I, I hope based on what I'm hearing that he's doing well in that environment as well, which it sounds like your son is too. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, it's so gratifying to see it. And then, you know, it's also slightly unnerving because I'm like, you know, hey, man, you might want to, you might want to this or you might want to that or whatever. And, and, you know, just coming back to my, my books, my first book, one of the things that was really important for me, and I think this is important as we, as we try to teach, you know, people um, that, you know, we either meet or don't meet or people who listen to this podcast or whatever. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to tell anybody what to do. I am the kind of guy who is going to say, here's what I did. And here's the experiences that I had. And, you know, um, glean what you can from my stories and, you know, the things that I learned by going through those experiences. And I think that's really crucial, um, you know, to 
because people don't like it when you jam stuff down their throats. People don't like it when you say you have to do this or, you know, if you want to make blah, 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 you got to do all, you know, just I never wanted to hear it. You know, I had to carve my own path. You had to carve your own path. And and, you know, our sons have to carve their own path, even though they've got role models that that have been through it, but they still have to carve their own path. So so it's, you know, I like to suggest, I like to say, hey, here was my experience, you know, maybe this, maybe try this, but, you know, certainly don't feel obligated if you feel like there's a better way. And I think, I think that plants the seeds without being too invasive and without being too, um, you know, sounding demanding or, you know, that kind of thing. Because the other thing I have to remember all the time is I am not in charge of anybody else's journey. And I don't know what they need. I don't know exactly what they need at any given time. I, I do know there's a great program for living that's, you know, principle based and all that sort of thing. But I don't know when those are going to apply. You know, there were times when I needed to understand different things um, than, you know, my son's going to need to understand at, you know, a different time. And so, you know, it's just pluck little things out that that maybe make sense and and take what you can reuse and leave the rest and and hopefully I've dropped enough of those little seeds where you know some of it starts to to germinate over time which you know they definitely have um and I've watched that happen but you know as they get older it's probably easier to break a little bit away from you know oh well dad said you know and they're, you know, they're thinking, oh, well, the dude in my office said, or this person said, or that person said, right? It's like, you know, we, we get a little bit more probably cast into the background, which is fine. And that's, I think, just normal. That's life. And that's why I wrote these books so that even if I'm gone, you know, they have something that if they choose to, they can pick up and maybe get some, some answers from. That's exactly why I wanted to start the podcast. It's almost like a legacy project, right? Just try to get my words, my voice. Uh, so some future relative of some kind, who is this Randy Wilson guy and what did he stand for and what was he all about? Yeah, easy. You can, you know, plug it in, whatever the, the technology will be in the future and then learn more about me, which is, you know, with the books and that type of thing as well, which is, which is super cool that you've done that. So let's pivot a little bit into your second book. We've kind of touched around it a little bit, right? when you stop fighting. Uh, yeah, I'd love to kind of dig in a little bit deeper about that as far as the differences between the two. Obviously, the title is uh, similar, but I, I would imagine that the stories inside are, are totally different. Uh, the messaging is totally different. Uh, yeah, I would love to go a little bit deeper into why you or when you stop fighting and, and learn a bit more about that too. Thank you. This is, this is what it looks like again. Uh, October 15th is when it's going to come out. But I'm going to read the uh, a little bit of the intro, if you don't mind, just because I think it it kind of shares the story um, and the the transition between book one and book two. Um, I wrote it, but I could never say it in a podcast, so I'm just going to read. It. It's easier that way. All right, introduction. The fight will stop. The journey of change can be difficult, intimidating, and filled with myriad emotions. It can also be the momentous adventure of a lifetime, complete with fulfillment, wonderful relationships, and incredible discoveries. In my first book, When I Stopped Fighting, I delved into my journey of addictions, destructive behaviors, and failings as a younger person, then into the challenges inherent in my quest to be better. I opened the doors to my life and showed how, many, uh, how I failed many times because I wanted you to know that success in life is not linear. I wanted to show you that there were failures throughout every aspect of my journey and how I learned to embrace them over time with experience. I was fortunate to have trekked from having my head planted in my ass to what has been an incredibly rewarding and wonderful life. My intent was to show you that it's possible, it's doable, and it's attainable. In When You Stop Fighting, it's your turn. We'll explore what you're likely searching for out there, as well as how you might be looking to acquire it. Whether it can be through addictions, attention, hiding, who knows? That's for you to uncover and explore. What's in these pages will help you do that. A little, a little piece of the, uh, of the introduction, which I think explains 
really what it's about. It's, you know, the first one's my story. The second one is trying to help, you know, as many people as I possibly can with their story. Love it. So uh, with this not being released at this point, I'm not familiar with it a lot. So unpack that a little bit, if you would. Can you go into a little bit more detail as far as like uh, any part of it, right? Is it stories again? Is it more of a, I don't want to say a how-to because that's that's kind of not, that's not how this is, right? But it's more of a uh, ex- experiential type uh, book as far as taking them through some different practices and things like that. Or I'll let you answer what, yeah, tell us a little bit more about the the book itself. It is, you know, when I was, when I was younger and just being introduced to a a different way of living, I was told, um, you know, that I could have peace, that I could have contentment, that I could have fulfillment, that I could wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. And, and, um, you know, I wasn't sure if I believed them, (laughs) um, but I also was willing to try to do to to do the work to see if I could, you know, achieve that, achieve a different way of life. And and like we talked about earlier, it's it's you know, it, it takes time and it takes um, adhering to, you know, a principled way of living. Um, we live in a world right now where. It, it, it's it seems to be that everybody is trying to get away from pain. They're trying to feel good all the time. Um, and and I you know we went through that. I went through that as far as a stage in my life, and that's why how I got addicted to drugs and alcohol. But but you know there are things that that we can be that can that can stick us you know in this world, and and it can be drugs and alcohol, it can be social media, it can be attention, it can be, you know, hiding, it can be staying away from people, it can be a number of different things where I'm, I'm not living to my potential. So, so the premise of the book is, is that there's, there's things in life that we all want, like um, solid relationships, uh, peace and contentment, um, you know, feeling good when we wake up in the morning, just you know, financial security, you know, all of these things, I'm just kind of using that as a premise to to what many of us want, and probably most of us want. The question is, how are we trying to get there? And how are we trying to achieve that? And, and there's a lot of erroneous ways to try to achieve that. Um, And there, you know, there aren't a lot of different paths to to actually achieve it, to actually put ourselves on a trajectory where we have peace of mind and contentment and we feel good about ourselves and we feel good about our lives and we have confidence and we have financial security. You know, that's a that's a that's a tall order, or at least it seems it's a tall order in this lifetime. So so I model that against, you know, our trajectory. And I look at at, you know, where I am currently and, you know, what is true north for me. And, you know, my wish list is somewhere in the middle here. Like, here's the things. If I go straight to true north, I'm going to hit my wish list. Well, if I get off the track a little bit, I'm not going to hit my wish list. And if I go off the track further, I'm further away from my hit list. So, or from my wish list. So, you know, one of the things that I, I, I think is important that I that I talk about in the book is, the further we go into the weeds or into the woods, the longer it takes to come out. So, you know, I have to discover what's going on. I have to discover, you know, how I'm trying to achieve my wish list in life and how am I trying to feel good? And, and is it something that's healthy for me? Is it something that's healthy for the people that are in my life or is it not? And, and a lot of times it's not. So, uh, you know, what I, what I try to do is, is show, okay, well, maybe this is where we're off and, and okay, let's start talking about some of the things that maybe we can do to change that things that we can um, align ourselves with that help us to, to have a different experience in this world and have a different experience with ourselves. Um, you know, the, the one thing that doesn't go out of, of favor, it doesn't have a, an expiration date is principles and, mm-hmm. and doing the things that, you know, that make sense for ourselves and for our lives. And we've talked about a lot of them, but, but, you know, there's, there's a progression to how we can have this life work for us. Um, and, 
and there's there's there are ways to do it. It doesn't have to be the same path for anybody, but but gathering a basket of these things that that help um, and implementing those things in our lives can can work wonders for us. Um, so and, and so I go through that, and and you know toward the end it really is is hey here's some things that you're gonna probably run into, and here's some things that are gonna be you know, things that are going to make you want to quit, things that are going to make you want to stop. And I also say that that's not allowed. You're not allowed to stop. You're, you have to keep going, you know, you have to, you have to fall and you have to get up and, and it, maybe it's a period of time that, you know, it takes you to get up, but you have to get up. Um, cause I want everybody to have this. I want everybody to wake up in the morning with a smile on their face. And, and so, you know, it, it culminates with, with some things that that I've experienced that I won't go into because I, I do want people to, you know, to really uh, dive into this thing and, and dig it and feel it and, and experience it. But um, some really cool things that have happened in my life because of the work that I describe in the book. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, if I can get everybody to do that, it would be great. I know I can't, but I want to get as many as I possibly can to jump on board with with just a program for living that makes sense and works. And and I, I don't think we have enough of that, honestly. We've got, you know, I'm just going to say this, and this is real quick, but um, I've got some reviews for my first book. And, and this is what, how I tried to write my first book and my second book. Um, and these are from Amazon. So, you know, you can fact, <laughs> fact check me. <laughs> you never feel that he is preaching or telling you what to do. He is only sharing his life story and allowing you to chart your own path. Um, which is exactly what I wanted to achieve. It will bring you to tears, laughter, and back to tears all within two pages. Hmm. Um, in a world saturated with self-help advice, Dittmer's unique perspective and genuine storytelling make this book a gem. Uh, saturated with self-help advice. Um, I, this, I like this one. I love how relatable this book is. This is a must read if you're struggling, stuck, scared, unsure, or in need of a new perspective in life. So, you know, those are some of the things that people said about my first book. I tried to write my second book and I think I achieved it in that same vein where I'm not, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not preaching. I just have stories that, you know, some are funny, some are me being a dumbass. You know, a lot of them are <laughs> me, me failing, whatever, I, you know, that's just, that's just the part of life. And we're all going to experience all of those things. Um, and, and, you know, here's some ways to potentially help, help just soften the blow a little bit and, and maybe get on a different trajectory if, if there's a struggle. I love it. So <laughs> just the stupid stuff, right? Through life that when you look back on it from my own life, I'm talking about from my own experiences, right? So it just, that's why I'm laughing when you say that about yourself, the stories that I've shared with my family, I've tried to be as transparent as I possibly can based on, you know, making sure that I don't say things or do things that are completely inappropriate. But at the same time, yeah, you just look back, you just, all the stories, all the things that we've all been through. Uh, it's an amazing thing that we've gotten to where we are even are today, right? So if you, if you can put your hand back, right, with some stories, with some experiences, and just try to help people just realize that they're not alone, uh, be relatable, uh, and just help them with some hope to realize that there are better days that are coming. Uh, if we do the work, the simple basics, we talk about principles. We talked about a lot of that in, on today's episode. I know we talked about that on the previous episode as well. And that's the, that's been the the difference for me. And it sounds like that's definitely been the difference for you too, Daryl, as far as finding the mentors, applying the principles in your life, and then just going through the trial and error, failing, failing again, failing, failing, maybe winning, uh, failing some more, right? And just keep on yep. with the process. Just keep on keeping on. But I've got to do this. And, and I don't know if you're going to be prepared to do this. I assume you will be, but I would love, so it's, I love stories, uh, uh, people in general that have the ability to share stories. I just, I, I, I cherish them and I, and I love it. Meaning I, I just, I get so uh, caught up in what's going on, but I, is there just a small story 
inside the book. I know you said you don't want to give away the secret sauce, right? Of everything that you're sharing inside the book. And that's why we're going to recommend everybody to go to the links here in the show notes and go out and find uh, the books for Daryl. Uh, but is there a, just a, a short little story? You talked about just some of the stupid things you used to do that, that you might share with us today that will be super impactful as we, you know, maybe start to wrap this one up for a close. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have like 40 stories going through my head. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Just pick one, pick one, but I would, yeah, if it could be the most impactful, whatever you think is, is kind of hitting you at this point, that'd be awesome. You know, it's a story actually that, and I'll say it cause it's in my first book, but I'm, 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 I'm kind of, I won't, I don't want to say embarrassed by it cause I haven't been embarrassed in a long time, but I'm kind of like, you know, it's one that I, that I don't, I, I look back and I say, what, what in the hell was going on? You know? So, so this once again, I laugh and I could, I've been in that situation so many times myself. That's why I'm laughing. So yes, please continue. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. I, I just, it's ridiculous. Cause I look back now and I, I even look back a year later and when, after I got sober, I'm like, are you serious, dude? So <laughs> um, I'm driving on the highway and I'm still in the midst of, you know, my drinking and drugs and all that sort of thing. And, and I don't know where I was coming from or where I was going, but I drove, I'm driving down the highway. And at that point in my life, I am the absolute, you know, I'm, I'm insecure. I'm scared. I'm messed up. I'm always thinking about what my next high or drink or drug or whatever is going to be. And so I drive past a plastic black plastic garbage bag on the highway and i'm like that could be weed that could be a black <laughs> plastic garbage bag full of weed wouldn't that be the best day of my life <laughs> so, so i go to the next exit and i get off the exit and i go back and it's probably that one's not too bad it's probably a mile mile and a half maybe and i get back on the exit where i thought i saw it and as I'm going down the exit ramp, it's way over on the left. I, I, I didn't hit it. So I'm like, I'm like, really, you know, but, 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 you know, the dream is still alive. I'm like, I'm like, could this possibly be a black plastic garbage bag full of weed? And, and so I go down to the other exit again, and then I go back again to the previous exit, but this exit is like 10 more miles down. So I'm shooting way down the highway. And, uh, and then I come back and I'm, and I'm, you know, getting close to the, uh, the alleged bag of weed and, um, and I pull over on the right side of the highway and I, you know, wait for traffic to pass. I go across and I open the bag, you know, just kind of rip it open a little bit. And it's obviously it's freaking grass clippings, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? And I didn't think that then I was like, you know what? I just think that would have been the coolest thing if that was like. 30 pounds of weed and you know, I'm uh, all my friends, we're going to have a party and you know, I can sell some, and, you know, I can whatever, but you know, that's, that's one story that I, that I talk about in the book. That's a little, you know, not a great one for me, but, but you know what, part of, part of what I needed to do in that book was be vulnerable and be open and kind of open up my kimono a little bit and tell people where I was good, bad and indifferent. And, uh, you know, probably more bad and indifferent, but that was, that was a story that I got a kick of out of when, uh, when I was writing my book. So I'm picturing this. So this is once again, pre digital age. So this was all, I mean, thank goodness. And we, no phones, nobody's like even paying attention. Probably people are flying. I'm just imagining this right yeah. on the interstate. Yeah. Are you in Michigan up at this point? Cause that's where you grew up. Right. So I'm in Indiana. Right. So I'm just picturing a, a flat highway. People just whizzing by you. You stand yeah. on the side of the street or side of the highway, trying to dig into this bag, begging and hoping that it, there's weed inside. Huh? That's, that's, that's a great story. They had no <laughs> idea that I was that messed up you know there's one there's <laughs> one chapter in this book which um i call it the dumbass chronicles um because of <laughs> some of the things that you know just and it's not all really sometimes the dumbass chronicles for me are um just taking things too far or you know hurting myself and putting myself in a position where i'm hurting myself physically or mentally or emotionally or whatever because i'm taking things too far and i'm not paying attention to the signals and all that sort of stuff so so there's a lot of that there's a lot of those kinds of stories where i'm trying to you know help people understand and and you know there's 
there's when we're young, it's easy to go overboard and you can withstand it when you go overboard. But when you're older, and I've had a lot of surgeries and I've messed up a lot of body parts because I've always gone overboard. And, you know, trying to save people from those lessons as well, I think is um, important because the more you damage yourself, again, it's, you know, the further you go into weeds, the harder it is to get out and the longer it is to get out. And, and, you know, I've got body parts that just don't really work like the, they're supposed to. And it's, you know, I'm not that old. Um, I just <laughs> messed them up because, because of dumbass chronicles. <laughs> and we're going to leave it there. So folks, if you want to learn more about the dumbass chronicles, we're going to highly recommend that you go out there and grab the book when you stop fighting, which is going to be launched here on October 15th. And then also you can get the copy today of the, when I stop fighting his original book. Uh, if you're watching this on video, you've seen the, the copy being shown a couple of times. Uh, one's an orange cover, covered copy. And I assume it looks like the second one is going to be a white covered copy. Uh, but yeah, Search for Daryl Dittmer. I did that very easily within Amazon and, and it pops up right away, which is super great. So, uh, Daryl, we've talked about it a few times. Yeah, you have more? Yeah, please share. Sorry, I just want to say one quick thing. I am I would love to, you know, offer your, your listeners um, a chance to get a copy of either book um, free. Uh, if they, if they send me an email, I'll, I'll give away two copies of each book. If they send me an email sometime between October 15th and November 1st, um, I'll do a random drawing with those emails. Just mention this episode with Randy. Um, and if you shoot me that email, I'll, I'll enter you in that drawing. So, and, and my email is Daryl at Daryl Dittmer.com. And we will have that in the Thank show you. notes as well. Yeah. We'll, we'll have it all. Uh, spelled out all the right way. And yeah, simply send them an email. That That's fantastic. I appreciate you offering that to the listeners here today. That'd be super cool. Uh, so I wish you luck with this book. Uh, I know you've got over 200 uh, reviews on your first book and it just had launched in the last few months. It looked like September, October of this last year. So to have that much uh, reviews or have that many reviews already so quickly is, is a testament to the quality of the book, the amount of effort that you put into it. And uh, yeah, I congratulate you on getting to that point. Thank and then to, to launch the second, uh, as I mentioned to you before we hit record, I've got a, a couple of friends that, that write books and publish books as well. And just the process it takes to get something from your head to the computer and then obviously out into the physical world is it's a challenge in and of itself. And so I, I definitely congratulate you to get to getting to that point for sure. Uh, in the previous episode, we talked about where places can, or people can get to know you a little bit better. Or is there anything as far as your links or anything to, for people to follow you more on, uh, get more insights into some of the thoughts and the ideas that you have to share with the principles and things we discussed today. Uh, where are the best places for people to learn more about you, Daryl? Thanks, Randy. Um, the best place is probably, and the way to get to all the links is uh, at DarylDittmer.com, which is D-A-R-Y-L-D-I-T-T-M-E-R.com. You, you can find links to my books. You can find links to all of my uh, the social media stuff. Um, if you want to go to Twitter or X, I'm at uh, at Daryl E. Dittmer. Um, Facebook is when I stop fighting. Instagram is when I stop fighting. Um, and pretty easy to find. Uh, I haven't seen anybody, you know, with that moniker yet. So, um, yeah, please, please reach out. You know, if there's, if there's anybody that I can help or assist or, you know, whatever, I'm more than happy to, you know, that's why I'm, that's why I'm here for this. Uh, the back nine of my life is to try to <laughs> try to help people as much as I can. So, so don't hesitate to reach out and, and, you know, shoot me an email or, or get in contact. Love that. Yeah. Same here. So that's, that's kind of what the whole process of the podcast is all about. And we didn't mention you've got a podcast under the same name as well. If people want to catch you on, on episodes, you doing interviews. Uh, I know you've done some solo episodes as well, but tell us about that a little bit too. Oh, thanks for, thanks for reminding me. Um, it's called when I stop fighting the podcast and, and as a as a you know a person who's gone through the addiction and recovery and and all that sort of thing, I do have some people who are recovering on there, which you know all kinds of different ideas and and ways to you know to change and to you know make life different. Um, I've had you know some authors and and doctors and you know just really wonderful people who are very open to and want to. 
uh, share and, and help change. So that's the intent of my podcast, which is, you know, exactly like Randy, as well as the in, intent of my book, which is just, you know, if there's different ways that I can reach out and help, um, that's what we're trying to do. So, so when I stop fighting the podcast, it's on uh, YouTube and Amazon and Apple and Spotify and all the all the major podcast uh, outlets. Once again, we talked about being in the analog age to the digital age, and it's amazing how you could be everywhere all the time. It's just, it's an amazing thing. It's so much fun. So folks, we'll have all those links in the show notes for Daryl as well. Uh, we'll have links to the books. We'll have links to all of his uh, places on social, his direct website uh, uh, address. We'll have that on there as well. But take him up on the free offer. Uh, first two books or, or the first four people, really, uh, two books of the uh, of the original book, When I Stop Fighting, and two more of the When You Stop Fighting. Take him up on that. Uh, I'll have the link to the email or to his email in the show notes. Uh, send him an email, mention the Rich Mind podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll get that out in the mail to you just as quickly as he possibly can. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, Daryl and I, we just have recently become acquainted with each other uh, through some different uh, things as far as our past, as far as being in the Midwest, just the stories, even just that story he was mentioning about the highways of, of Michigan, right? I mean, I can just visualize that perfectly in my own mind because that's exactly how my life was as well. I wasn't searching for weed on the sides of, of highways, but at the same time, I could just, I can totally see that. And if that's if those are the types of stories he's explaining in his books, I'm telling you, you're going to want to get a copy of these books and dive in. Uh, it sounds like the wisdom that's being shared, uh, along with the the things that we're talking about here on even these two episodes of this podcast. You need to get in proximity to folks that have been there, done that, right? Different aspects of life, different experiences of life. See what resonates with you. You might uh, pick up on some things that might be exactly what you're looking for that's going to help propel you into this next phase of life. You talked about uh, the, the two of us kind of being on the back nine of our life and we're trying to give back, but you might be just at the very beginning uh, where you can pick up on something and it can totally change the trajectory of your life. And that's what we're hoping for you moving forward. And that's why we're doing this today on the podcast episode. So go out there, have a fantastic day, focus on being great. If you wouldn't mind sharing this with your family and friends, help us get the, the message of the Rich Mind podcast and then Daryl's work out there as well. I would greatly appreciate that. You can follow me on all the podcast platforms of choice and as well on YouTube. You can search for myself uh, at Randy Wilson on YouTube. You can find the video episodes as well. So as I mentioned, go out there, have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with the next episode and the next guest very soon. Until then, bye now.